Hello again, welcome back to the Daily Bible Project Podcast. Um, We're in day 176 of our journey through the whole Bible, which began 176 days ago, back in the beginning of Genesis. And we're continuing this groundbreaking story contained within uh, Genesis 22, chapter 22, where Abraham faces the ultimate temptation or test. Now you may remember that last time we reached the dramatic point in the story where Abraham had tied his son to an altar and Abraham had literally was there with his hand raised with a knife in it about to potentially slay his son. So let's just pick up the text in the next verse which is verse 11. But then the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld withheld from me your son, your only son. Now what I would like us to to make note of today, very importantly, is who is speaking to who in this passage. Who is speaking to Abraham here? It is again this, this character referred to as the angel of the Lord. Okay, so what does the angel of the Lord says? And it says, Now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Now interestingly, if you look in most of your Bible translations, you'll see that the word me is capitalized, and so it should be. Because the angel of the Lord in this passage is the pre-incarnate Christ. And as in the case uh, 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 when that term appears in many cases, that is who is being talked about here in many passages in the Old Testament. It's not on every single occasion, but I'm absolutely sure that is the case in every passage, which is why the Bible translators clearly spell that out for us with the capitalization of, of the use of that word, me. Now we're then told in the next verse, verse 13, we're picking it up. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behind him there was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorns. So Abraham, when he took the ram, he offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Do you remember what he had said to Isaac earlier about how the God himself would provide a lamb? And God has provided a lamb, the lamb as a substitute on this occasion here for Isaac. So God is seen to provide a substitutionary sacrifice. Now let's just think about that for a second. Isn't this a perfect picture of the death of Jesus Christ who himself uh, was willing to die for our sins? We hear throughout the New Testament Jesus described as the Lamb of God. In fact according to John the Baptist in the opening verses of John's Gospel account John the Baptist is seen when he sees Jesus appearing over the horizon is seen to cry out Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world <clears throat> excuse me the Bible elsewhere repeatedly tells us that Jesus died on the cross as a substitutionary sacrifice as the one who died in our place to pay for our sins so that we don't have to and because of what he did we can be forgiven So we see that the Lord provides a substitutionary sacrifice and Abraham acknowledges what's going on and as it says, he's acknowledged by saying the Lord himself provided the lamb. And when we think about it, we may think that we should have died for our sins, but we can know because the Bible tells us that instead of us dying, Jesus himself was offered as that substitutionary sacrifice which God himself provided. So God provides. But God provides all kinds of things. We could take that one little phrase God provides and go crazy with it. Thinking about what does God provide? Well he provided salvation of course absolutely as a free gift. All we have to do is trust in him. But what else does God provide? Well for us he provides in salvation instead of condemnation. He provides life instead of death. He provides strength in response to our own weaknesses and he can provide you with joy. 
instead of the sorrow that you're experiencing. And ultimately, he will provide us with a home in heaven instead of a place in hell. God provides, and it all started when he provided Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. And that great sacrifice is foreshadowed here in Genesis 22. What's really going on in this passage is God fulfilling his promise to, to provide salvation for Abraham and for blessings in the future. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, let's just continue from verse 15 onwards because it tells us this. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this, you have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities or the gates, it says in some translations, of their enemies. And though your offspring and through, sorry, your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Bathsheba. And Abraham stayed in Beersheba. And that closes off the story. But God here is just in this closing passage. Is saying the Lord is saying. You obeyed me so I am going to bless you. Now it is important that right here at the end of this passage. We don't get things mixed up. Because if we get things mixed up. Or put them in the wrong priority. Then it can lead us to really mess up. We have faith. You have faith. And what do you get for that faith? Well, the Bible clearly teaches you receive forgiveness and ultimately heaven. But don't get that backwards. Don't think that if you just choose to obey, that that will get you into heaven. You obey because you believe, because you have faith. That obedience may indeed mean that you have blessings in this life, but it is not the obedience and isolation that will gain you eternal life. Only faith in Jesus Christ as the atoning sacrifice for your mistakes for when you've missed the mark when you've got things wrong for when you've sinned will do that this is the last time in Abraham's life that God will speak to him and what he cho chooses to do in his closing conversation if you like is to reiterate the promises he made before but he also adds a few more besides now it's interesting because I wonder if you knew that this is the first occurrence of the word obey in the Bible. God promised to multiply Abraham's descendants as the stars and as the sand in the seashore. But God also promised that Abraham's descendants would possess the gates of his enemies. The term the gates of his enemies simply means that they had would, that, that the seeds of Abraham would have victory over his enemies in the future. The promise is to Abraham's descendants, called here in this passage in the book of Genesis, referred to as his seed. His seed on the surface simply means descendants. But did you know that according to the New Testament, and for that matter some parts of the Old Testament, that there are four types of descendants? Did you know that there are four types of descendants of Abraham? Well, we shall find out who they are and what that means when we come back together again in the next episodes. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Remember, you can always get a full transcript of anything I've said in any audio version of the podcast. And if you're watching a video version, there should be a link through to the Buzzsprout website where the audio version of the podcast is hosted so you can get access to a transcript there. I hope you find that helpful. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And I really trust I can see you back right here tomorrow. It might be for you or very soon on the Bible Project Daily Podcast. Bye bye for now.